This is my seventh year uh, to be part of the Congress and it's the end of my second year of being a member of the steering committee. So for me, I sort of started out as an attendee and then had this great opportunity to be to be part of the steering committee, which was really an open door to really be able to play a big part in making recommendations about content. And it was it was a nice evolution and so I hope that continues. But evolution of Site Congress, it started out good and it's continued to be good. It's stronger every year. And the really nice thing about Site Congress is this. Clinicians love coming to this meeting. So every day, without exception, somebody approaches me in the hallway and says, thank you for what you're doing. This is the best meeting I attend. So it's been a real pleasure. I'd say you are missing out on a fabulous opportunity in really three different areas. They're missing out on a learning opportunity, a learning experience. And like I said before, it's a, missing, a missed opportunity for networking. As clinicians, I think we frequently, because we're so busy, we get stuck in offices, we get stuck in facilities, and we work just back to back. There's not a break. There's not an opportunity to really sit down with colleagues and talk about, hey, what are you doing? which kind of cases really stump you. And that's what I see happening here. Clinicians get together. So outside of all the learning in session time, there's all this time outside where clinicians are sitting together and talking. I mean, all you have to do is walk down the hall and you will hear people talking and saying, hey, did you hear about what they were talking about in this session? I can't wait get to get back to my office. I'm gonna try that on Monday. And then you'll see people trading emails. So I think there's a lot of team building that happens, which, I mean, that's the way it should be. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of an, I guess there's a lot of ways to put that together, but for me, it really is very simple. It falls into three domains. It's learning, it's networking, and then of course, I think we have to say, it's just a lot of fun. So the fun, come and experience it next year, but I'll speak to the learning and the networking, because I think those are important to us as clinicians. The learning is about a variety of sessions. So no matter what your specialty is, if you want to branch out and learn something new, so I mean, this is the place to do it because there's four days really packed with learning opportunities. And I've said this year after year, I have people come up to me year after year, and this is, again, I think why clinicians love this, this meeting. Because the, the sessions are a beautiful, if you will, I mean, you may not like this uh, idea, but it's a beautiful marriage, really, of scientific data and clinical usefulness and practicality. So you, you get access to new interventions or maybe a twist on an older intervention, but it's not just, oh, there's Sandra from Houston, Texas telling us about what she's doing in her practice. I mean, that's okay, but what makes this meeting unique is clinicians are saying, okay, this is what I'm doing and this is what the data says that supports the intervention. So it makes it, I mean, it makes it solid. So that's the learning, but re it, I still think it's about the networking. So we as clinicians promote and push collaborative care. So what that means is everybody come together from all different specialties and talk about what we know and what our perspective is on treatment so we can have better outcomes. My take on this meeting is it's about collaborative learning. And what I see every year is clinicians coming from all different specialties prescribers, non-prescribers, different practice settings. We come together, again, collaborative care, collaborative learning. It's a chance to really share our expertise with one another. So those things, I think, are unique to this meeting as well. Uh, I think the answer is really very simple. It's about collaborative learning. So any clinician that I would meet who is a marriage and family therapist, a social worker, somebody who's practicing from that point of expertise might ask, how is a meeting that's about mostly psychiatrists and primary care doctors, prescribers, how does that work for us? And the answer is this, outside of the meeting, we are, as part of a collaborative care treatment team, we're about learning their specialty, their expertise, learning from them, as well as bringing to the table what our specialties are. 
So here's a meeting where we can come together for a full four days and sit down in sessions or over breakfast, over coffee, and have really intimate dialogues with everybody who's part of that collaborative care treatment team. So we all bring a unique twist, but this is the place to do it. You know, the last two years, Congress has moved um, in the direction of wellness, uh, well-being, helping patients to flourish and grow. And if you look at World Health Organization, their definition of health, it is right on point. Site Congress is right on point with what WHO is telling us. It is not just about absence of symptoms, but it's about overall well-being, optimism, resilience. So Site Congress a couple of years ago, we, we took the charge and we began offering sessions on that. So this year there were a couple, there were actually several looking at is happiness teachable, looking at different forms of meditation. And here's the real challenge. So if you come in as a psychotherapist wanting to talk about meditation and happiness, Sometimes you get a raised eyebrow from very traditional clinicians. Oh, it's a little touchy-feely, right? There's a little bit standoffish. But what we've done, and I think Congress has done this across all sessions, we've offered good, solid scientific evidence that 100% supports the intervention. And once that happens, anybody who, who's in the audience in those sessions who's a little bit unsure, when they see, for example, the neurobiology data, you can't refute, I mean, you can't argue with it. So that's been really nice to see that. Plus in those sessions, as well as the other ones that are more in the realm of psychotherapy sessions, those clinicians have done a really good job of offering practical tools. So you can go to a session that's very academic and very interesting, but at the end of the day, if you can't take it back to your office and use it with your patients on Monday morning, eh, you know, the question we ask is, well, so what? So I think we've done a really good job here of marrying the two. A couple of other sessions that really spoke to me, there was a session on uh, bullying uh, with children. I think they focused more on adolescents, but it was super practical. The whole session was, there was a little bit of didactic stuff, but they also did role playing with audience members, which again, I think pulls people a little bit out of their comfort zone to be called upon the stage to do role playing, but it was such an effective way to teach the message. And again, those people in that session are gonna go home with something they can use straight away. Um, I don't wanna forget, there were two sessions on evidence-based, oh actually, excuse me, two sessions on measurement-based practice interventions. Uh, we had Kurt Kroenke, Dr. Kroenke, who spoke about PHQ-9 and the GAD-7. Very useful information. And the best part about that session, I really think, was the Q&A people were hungry to talk to him about how to use that to really keep track of patients' progress or lack thereof so we'd know what to do. And then Dr. David Sheehan came in and obviously he's the originator of the MINI, a structured diagnostic interview tool. Again, very well received, very practical and something that we as clinicians, we can take right back and start using on Monday. So a nice, nice variety. So over the course of the last two years, being part of steering committee, I think people sort of see you and see you as very accessible and they wanna tell you about their experiences, which is a nice thing. So this Congress, um, I did two, three evening meditation sessions and after those people are just more relaxed or a little more laid back and so there was lots of conversation. I always ask people like, what'd you like about today? What's working? What would you suggest we do differently? And without a doubt, the consistent theme is, I love this meeting. So I'm really curious and I wanna know why they love it. So asking them about it, they love it because they can approach faculty, and that's not only just steering committee faculty, but that's really any of the faculty. So they don't feel like there is sort of this barrier between them as learners and attendees and the faculty. So it's very collegial, if you will. Um, really sitting down and having access and I think that makes a difference. I, I may have mentioned before that clinicians are willing to, presenters are willing to offer their email, offering websites. So 
there's more of a partnership, if you will, in the learning. It's a very, very good feeling. And I have to tell you, it's consistent. That's never been different with Congress. And I think that's why I see people, a gentleman just last night, who said, this is the 15th year in a row that I've attended Psych Congress. And he travels a fair distance to come here. We have friends, a married couple from Canada. They come here every year. And so before that whole idea of networking and collaborative learning, it's a beautiful example of that. So this is, I think that is a high point of this meeting. I think it's true whether we're talking about Psych Congress or we're talking about any other profession. Once you learn something a certain way, you tend to stick to what you know. I mean, I do. And change is very difficult. So as an example, with measurement-based care and the importance of using scales and screeners, most clinicians, when you present that to them, will agree 100%. But if they weren't trained using those tools, they'll go back to their practice, get busy, just like I do on occasion, and you just forget about it because it's not part of your regular routine. So getting people here to this Congress early in their maybe at the latter ends of their education, but clearly early in their practice lives, it just makes sense. That's the time to learn about um, all of what we're talking about, Psych Congress, so early on is much better than later. But let me be fair to the older of us in the group. Uh, old dogs really can learn new tricks. I mean, it is true. I've learned a lot from coming to this Congress, things that I just wasn't trained. I didn't know those things. They weren't part of my program. So you come here, again, easy access to the faculty. You can take it back and start using it. So I still agree with you. I think earlier on in the learning cycle and earlier on in practice, much better. I'm always looking forward to Site Congress. It is one of the highlights of my year. It's a break from practice, so it's almost, I heard somebody last year describe it like, it's like old home week. So it's a chance to come back because again, people who come here year after year, they see people they've met, they see old friends. And so there's a lot, again, a, very, a lot of warmth and people are excited to come here. So for me, I'm loving that. I mean, plus it's in Las Vegas, so it's certainly a nice, fun location. I don't want to let that slip by. But I'm looking forward to, again, an opportunity of meeting my colleagues, seeing what worked in the last year, what they learned last year. Did they take any of it back? Did they implement any of it? Uh, and I'm guessing some of it will stick and some of it won't. And what doesn't, we'll offer that session again and deliver the message again. So I think it goes back to what we started with earlier. It's all about the learning style, which is A+, plus, and it's about, I kind of like the description, it's about collaborative learning. Clinicians coming from all different specialties, sitting down and talking about what they're doing and what's working. So I'd like to invite everybody to come to Las Vegas next year. I think our dates are September 30th through October 3rd. I'd say get it on your calendar early and we'll see you in Las Vegas.